conversation that we had started last week because last week it was tied 2-2, and we really didn't know who was going to win the series because both teams were landing haymakers at that point. Now that, that Boston is done basically lost the last three in unspectacular fashion, Steph Curry gets his, his much-awaited a finals MVP, now becomes just the seventh player in NBA history to have uh, four NBA titles and multiple MVPs. Tasha, I, I think I'm ready to move him into my top ten now. I wasn't last week, but after his performance, I think I'm ready to move him into my top ten. What say you? You saw that look I just gave you. <laughs> look for the people on Spotify and and, and the iTunes. What, what do you? What, what's that look say? No, no. The, the all-time leading three-point scorer, four championships in eight years, four titles, two MVPs, and a Finals MVP. That's not good enough. Again, again. Give, give me your top ten. Give me all what all the pundits say. Give me the top ten. Give me the top ten. Okay, so the top ten, basically, if I remember the order correctly, don't have to remember it. I got it right here. It was MJ one, LeBron. Okay, we not take. Wait a minute. One, one by one. You said MJ one. MJ one. We not gonna. We not gonna take him off. No, LeBron. We not gonna. Definitely gonna take LeBron off. Right, Kareem. We not taking Cap off. Magic. We. We ain't taking Magic, magic off. Right. Wilt Chamberlain at number five. Ooh, we can't take Wilt off either. Uh, okay. Uh, Bill Russell at number six. You can't take Bill Russell off. Larry the Legend. Bird. You're not gonna, you're not gonna take him off just because he's white. He saved basketball, and that's right. We gotta keep it real. Uh Tim Duncan at number eight. Let's move. Let's, let's skip over oh. Tim. Come on, come on back. Okay, all right. Well, what about number nine and Oscar Robinson? Because you know nobody's going to say number ten, Kobe, because of uh, he's yeah. In heaven. Okay. So, what I can do since you, I didn't know the big fundamental was on the list, and I shout out to my late great grandmother Mary Jane, who was the biggest Spurs fan, and she, I love that Tim Duncan. That's what she used to always say. He got the down for now, Granny, I think you. Oh, I think we're gonna have to move, move him out and put Steph in that spot. If 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 Duncan is in that top ten, he's the only one out of that you named that I would say could could go. The mom, the mom was gonna be Oscar Robinson. Now, and maybe it's because I didn't get to watch him play like I got to watch the rest of the top ten play outside of Bill Russell, of course. But Bill Russell, um, you can't know basketball without knowing and respecting what Bill Russell did. Uh, How you gonna coach and everything. play in the same game? Right, right. And he put ten L's on on Jerry West, the logo. So I think he stays there. Uh, it, it's gonna be tough, but when you look at what Steph has done, and I try not to be a prisoner of the moment. This has been quite spectacular of what he's been able to accomplish. Not only uh, from a team perspective, but he looks like you and me. If we're standing behind him in a line at Walmart, you can look at him and say, "Hey, Carter Paul Coulter." You can do what he does. Just work on your handles, work on your threes. You don't have to be seven foot tall. You don't have to be a unicorn like KD. You don't have to be some freak of nature like LeBron or some mammoth human being like uh, uh, Giannis or Shaq or Giannis <laughs> that, that you can get it done. Now, a young a young fellow at my job yesterday walked up to me and said that Steph Curry is now the greatest point guard of all time. My question to you is, is he better than Magic? Is he better than Isaiah now with, with his current – First, you you know I'm not going to ever put nobody in front of Isaiah when you talking about point guards. We're not going to do that. We're not we're not going to do that. So, he's not better than Magic. It's no no way. No way. Magic, Magic had it all. Magic could pass, Magic could shoot, Magic could play center. Like Magic could do it all. And then and go home and have an orgy and come back on the second night of a back-to-back -back and drop a triple-double. I mean, you got to count that in. He was pleasing more than just Cookie. Now, um, Facebook user Goon Squad checking in says, Curry, not a top-10 player. Duncan's the best power forward ever. And we're splitting hairs when we say Duncan or, or, or uh, Curry. But the thing is with Curry, he has – the way his game is aging, he can do this like Ray Allen. He could be he could be at the end of your bench at forty five years old sinking threes like so. Because I mean, yeah, he's the baby face assassin now. He could be the old man face us uh, assassin. <laughs> His pops was able to drain those threes at a late age as well. So, um, yeah, uh, 
averaging 30 points a game. I mean, he was the, clearly the best player on the court in the finals. I think he did everything he could to solidify that. Now, one person that we constantly debate about on this show is Kevin Durant. Does this does what the Lakers were able to? I mean, the 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 Warriors were able to accomplish without KD. Does that make KD's move look a little more suspect, or do you still support his move to Brooklyn? I mean, as we discussed earlier, he did that because I think he really wanted to show people I can do this. On my own, I'm not just joining, you know, this team to win. Was he paddling the bell and Michael McDonald? <laughs> I'm on my own. Once again, now. So I the old school. How it was supposed to be on my own. <laughs> hey, Michael got down with her on that song, but as we as we digress, um. So, so with, with KD, to me, I thought that, that he had nothing else to prove because he was the best player on their team. If he wasn't the best player on Golden State's team, then I could see why he why he would want to get out from somebody's shadow. But he I know, overshadowed so, the, the, the game, On the game the other day, one of the they were giving the stats about how Golden State they lost when KD was injured. That you know. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I didn't think he had anything else to prove. I thought the the pressure was on Steph. But do you think this puts more pressure on KD to have to win a title now that Steph did it with without him and with Jordan Poole and, and with uh, Andrew Wiggins? I mean, it it's not about just because of this championship. The pressure's on KD now because of all the moves that he made trying to get to Brooklyn and while in Brooklyn. That's where let's keep it real. Trying to be trying to be LeBron and LeBron ain't even good at being a GM. Let's just keep it real. Now, Facebook user says if Tatum. It wasn't acting like a light skin in the clutch. Maybe they could have won. Tatum was terrible. As a matter of fact, let me back up the Facebook user with some stats. First player in NBA history to amass 100 turnovers in the playoffs. Mm. 100 turnovers? Did he set light skin brothers back? What are we thinking about Jason Tatum now? First team, um, all NBA. Um, we had him in the in, in the, the players club going coming into the finals for we what he did against Giannis and what he did against uh, the Heat. What do we think about about him now? Because he looked kind of soft. This is it. That boy was tired. And I don't think he was – I don't – because, you know, everybody else on that team played the same amount of games he did in the playoffs. You know, but they was game sevens. I don't know if it was something about his conditioning. If he, I don't know what he looked – but he looked a lot more tired than everybody else. And, you know, a lot of times when you're tired – you, you make mistakes. Even though right. you say, oh, I can do this, you still make the mistakes when you're tired. But you Especially also – Especially turnovers. Yes. And I could – and I don't fault um, – I, I, I cannot pronounce the brother's name. The Boston's coach um, – Oh, Emi Adoka. Okay, because I don't ever want to say it wrong, so I, I just don't say it. You know, I can't even spell coffee. You can just uh, say Neil Long's man. Yes. As somebody said uh, – that they didn't need to win. You can't. You can't win a championship and go home to Neil Long. You <laughs> right. Save save some prosperity for the rest of us brothers out here. But I can understand him saying, "Okay, I'm going to take him out and let him rest." But at that point, he was st- he was gassed. It, right. it wasn't th- th- when he came to this series, he was gassed. Right. And it, and his performance showed that. Yeah. It it, it really did. Um. So. I guess my my question to you with that is: Was Golden State the best team in the NBA, or did they have the the easiest run? Let's look at what Boston had to do. They had to go through KD. They had to go seven games with Giannis. They had to go seven games with the number one seed Heat. Meanwhile, Golden State had a a hobbled Denver team that had just Jokic as the only star. Then they had a a, a Memphis team that was putting hands on them until Jaw went down the last three games. Then a, a one-man show in Dallas that they pretty much just muscled through. Now, when you talk about fatigue, I can understand why Tatum would have been more fatigued coming through the gauntlet that he went through. So is, is Golden State clearly the best team in, in the world, or did they have the best draw? But I don't think they're necessarily the best team in the world. I'm not going to go that far, but they're up there. The benefit – first of all, I told you guys after the first round – Remember, I told you, I said, Golden State's going to win. They're going to win the championship. 
And Memphis was their toughest, even with uh, Ja out, they were still kind of, you know, going neck to neck. They started skating without a stick, as you love to say. Yes. I think had they had to rumble and tumble with a Miami, if they had to rumble and tumble with a Milwaukee, you know, down Chris Middleton. Right. I think it would not have been as easy. I'm not saying that they but just they like, would have done it is what you're saying. Right. 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 Yeah. It, it, it would have been a little bit difficult because Boston was going literally toe to toe with. I, I you notice I didn't name Brooklyn because they got swept. But <laughs> even then, they did. They did get swept. <laughs> but even then, to slow down a player like KD, you know, and that, Styles make fights. Right, so that you know that that made a difference, but the other games they were it was grit and grind. But if you take care of your body, I mean, I go back. Jordan was crazy. Everybody thought Jordan was crazy, but Jordan's body wasn't playing out, giving out on him at the end of the game. Right in right. the fourth quarter. So I mean, maybe they just need to get in the gym, work hard, and start doing a little more cardio and being able oh, to withstand that. I'm glad you said that because you're about to segue us. But before we segue to what you're just talking about right there, because that takes us to a whole other topic. Facebook user says Celtics need a, a point guard, trade smart for Jalen Brunson here in Dallas, and the Mavs win. It's a win for both teams. Are you a fan of, of, of Marcus Smart or is, like um, uh, Shannon uh, says on Undisputed, that he's basically the defensive player of the year masquerading around as a point guard? Yes, I'm uh, especially after him and that brother calmed down. You know they allegedly beat up their mama's boyfriend. Stop that! Rookie year shenanigans, but I digress. Um, I like I like what Marcus Smart is now doing. I like what he has become. He's but out Steph there. put him in the blender in the finals. Yeah, he did. He did. But I mean, again, that's Steph. Right. And you think? Right. I think Marcus Smart could have been him and his brother could have been better players had they been more dedicated to themselves as opposed to, I need to be on the same team with my brother. We live together. We drive one car. Like that. I like what he's doing now. He's just got some more learning to do because I think he's just now accepting the fact that, yeah, I can, if I put my mind to this and quit messing around, I can, this is what I can do. Now, Damian Coulter shouts out to Mac D checking and he says, go to state. The injury book got them early. Everyone else right before the playoffs. We yeah, this is what we were talking true. about. Um, taking nothing away from the chip. Now, this is where, where luck comes in with, with some of these championships. Because, again, like you said, Memphis was giving it work even without Jaw those last couple of games. You, you come into a, a situation where Jokic didn't have Michael Porter Jr. or, uh, or Murray. The, that that would have made that a bit more competitive. And Dallas, Dallas was just not ready. That, that that was basically a game seven meltdown from Phoenix, who would have gave them a much tougher series than the Mavs with Luka Doncic, who was who was out of shape and wearing down himself. So yeah, the, taking nothing away from Golden State, they put those hands on on Boston. Um, yeah, oh, the Morris brothers. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the Morris. Yeah, that's the Morris brothers. Yeah, but you, um, but you know, Smart was those. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on. So I wanna I wanna first of all call you to the carpet on something, T Sizzle. I wanna blame you for something. They said that the power of life and death resides in the tongue. And what you did to this young player, you basically ruined his career with uttering two words about him. Oh, I blame you. You it is your fault. One Anthony Davis was on his way to being one of the, the, the most spectacular athletes in the history of sports. He went from high school point guard phenom to college phenom, college national champion, to number one overall pick, to all-star, to, to, to first-team all-NBA offense and defense, until you uttered those two words, street clothes. Ever since you called this man street clothes, he hadn't been able to stay on the court. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up AD right now it's because he had a tweet that went viral earlier this week. And I blame you. The The man was on a, on a live social media platform basically nonchalantly bragging that he hadn't touched a basketball since April the 5th. April, uh, I'm looking at the calendar. This is June 18th. He hadn't touched a, a basketball since April the 5th. Now, we know that he's missed about 100 games the last two seasons. He didn't finish the last two seasons. He was the reason why the Lakers got ran down from 2-1 against Phoenix two years ago. 
And the reason why they didn't make the playoffs this year because he couldn't stay on the court. If you are a Lakers fan, would this would this be something that you'll be concerned with? The fact that Anthony Davis is just like, oh, I ain't touched the basketball since April the fifth. I'm out here chilling. I'm in my Dolce and Gabbana. I'm out here in La La. I'm out here living my life. I got my max deal. I, I, I'm doing it. But like you said about Jordan, they knew that they had to get stronger against the Pistons. How they refused to go on vacation after that '89 loss and all hit the gym that following Monday and came back and overthrew Boston. I'm sorry, the uh, Pistons the next year and went on to have six of the next eight championships. Does this worry you if you're a Laker fan that one of your cornerstone players is taking this nonchalant approach to the offseason when they had one of the worst seasons in Laker history? I think it worried them when he the when he the minute he got there. And his games not played was more than his game played. Right. So him not right. taking shots, I don't think they're worried, but I think they're mad. Like, really, Ninja? Really? Right. You, like, you basically have missed more games that probably add up to a season and a half. And then you're saying, okay, I'm just chilling. I'm, it's, I'm not going to pick up a ball. I'm not going to work out. I'm not going to do anything. Right. Right, and 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 this is a great point. Some players want to be great. AD ain't that guy. He's content with his one chip. Do you agree? Yeah, and then plus they put him on that seventy-five. Oh my God! Yeah, he's 70, on the all seventy-five. I mean, he's racking up the accolades, and I'm wondering how. How's he over a Kyrie Irving? Right. How How are you over a Vince Carter? Like, yeah, and how are you over a Dwight Howard? Right. Now, y'all say what y'all want to say about Dwight. For the first, when he was down there in Orlando, Dwight Howard was a hell of a ball player. Right. And you don't get to where he is. Because when, when he was in high school, they was talking about how much of a, a baller he was. Right, right. But, right. you know, he had a lot of other issues going on, which I think. Well, everybody got a little freak in them. Yeah, so we'll keep but, going. yeah, you know, but I mean, I you know, people want to say it's because of Shaq. When Shaq was talking about him and Kobe made him cry or whatever. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you have to put all of that in. But Dwight was good. But AD is used goods. He's I, I, I didn't like the fact that he came out of Kentucky early. And I, I don't know if I ever told you that or even mentioned that before. He should have stayed longer. One more developed or, or, or why? Was it was it the skills or do you think he could have learned more from Calipari? I mean, he's got, he's got, that's the thing. He has the natural skill. He needed to be developed into a better player. And that's what he's, that's what he's, doing. wait a minute. Hold on. Keep talking. Somebody's at the door. Hold on. Right. While she has someone at the door, um, if I'm a Lakers fan, I'm going to be concerned for one reason and one reason only. Anthony Davis was brought over in that trade where you got rid of all of those young pieces because he was supposed to be the, the, the person who grabbed the baton from LeBron. It was supposed to be a transition. He placed the, the Dwayne Wade to LeBron's heat days, and then LeBron, as he ages, once he grabs Kareem's uh, scoring title, he passes the baton to 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 AD, and AD keeps the train rolling. Can you? Uh, AD is your best player. It's not a championship caliber team. So what no, are you doing to the Lakers? If I mean they're kind of stuck with him for a little bit. If I mean, but it's just. <sighs> Right now, either he's going to have to learn how to want to play and want to win and want to be better, or he needs to just disappear. Don't even send – why would you even send that tweet? Don't send the tweet. Right, right. That didn't, that didn't even need to be said because right. if you're not going to say, okay, well – I totally agree. I, right, I put this tweet out here. Now I got to get up because I know next season if I'm going to do this, I'm going to get – I'm on the trading block of people going to talk about I mean, we've all know that these players these days are very sensitive. They can't right. take – Look at right. KD, burner account here, burner account there. And after Draymond said that about him on that uh, on the show, he spent, they said, so like almost half the day responding to tweets. Yeah, he sure did. Now, uh, trade AD to the Bulls for Levine if possible. Um, I would like to probably get somebody with some more size. The Lakers yeah. have always been the home of the big man. So um, I would have to, I would like to get a package of players, uh, you know, sitting around a big man for, but if you're the Lakers, and you're LeBron, and LeBron seeing this, and we're about to get to LeBron in just a second. If you're LeBron seeing this, you know now, hey, I got Westbrook that can't shoot. He lost his confidence. I got AD who rolled my coat and sold me a bill of goods, and now he got in that back window uh, as is, by as is. He has no more warranty. 
<laughs> he's one of those lemon law cars that that you know the the, the oil light is on, the, the the check service engine light is on. If you LeBron, do you forego signing an extension and try to look elsewhere? Because let's not forget, Steph Curry now has four rings along with LeBron James. You don't think LeBron James is thinking I got to get one more now, or my whole era could be defined by Steph Curry having five rings and I have four? That would be a nightmare scenario for a player like LeBron James. But I just read, and I meant to send it to you, but I was reading it, and then I I, I had to go to work real fast, so I, I stopped reading it. But it says something about LeBron was trying to do ownership. Yeah, he get, wants to buy a team in L.A. Yeah, get, get into a team. I'm sorry, in Las Vegas. Yes, in Las Vegas. And they were saying, you know, if he gets that team, if he's the owner, so Bronny could be on that team, team, and then he would, of course, play there so he can get his wish of playing with his son. Right, right. Well, and, and speaking of which, let's go ahead and, and get right into this because I, this is a, an open forum where I want people to tell the truth. We have a saying here at the Extra Point. If you're in the booth, you got to tell the truth. So Goon Squad, Tasha T. Sizzle, y'all are on the hot seat right now because I got a question that nobody has ever really properly answered. But let's let's all we all family. Let's all just put it out on the table today. Why is LeBron James the most hated athlete in the world? I will admit this. You think I hate LeBron. I don't hate LeBron James at all. But a lot of people do. A lot of people do. I just hated him when they played my Pistons. And he. I'm not I'm not even going to go into that. But you oh, when he put I'm, that 25 in a row on their head and ended that Pistons dynasty of six straight NBA out? Pop? Oh. How do you log out? I'm just saying. Now, that was a Young King thing he did. I think, and we've discussed this previous too on previous shows. He's it's oversaturation. Oh, okay. So this is this is an angle that I haven't really heard yet. Go ahead with that. Because everywhere you look, it's LeBron here, LeBron there, LeBron. Like the, especially with the NBA, if you're a true NBA fan, you may want to see other people. It was just for so long they were just shoving LeBron James down our throats. I mean, yeah, they do it with other players, but it was just like, because they knew LeBron was the draw. And also when he made the decision, I think that put up a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths too. Um, I didn't care that he left, to be honest, but I just kind of wish he would have did it a little differently. You okay, know, like how so? Like not, I mean, you could have just went to the people and told the people and let the, let the news release it. You doing that whole set up in that center, even though the money went to the children, that's all well and good, but you made this whole public spectacle and a whole, that show was like an hour long for him to say. We were like, come on with the, with the, you know what come on with the decision. And so it's like, dude, come on, let get to, where you going? Which we already knew he was going to Miami anyway, because why put on that big song and dance to say I'm just standing home. Here. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. But um, that has a lot to do with it as well. And if you are a fan of another team and LeBron is constantly digging in your team's ass and dragging your team down down the court, you're going to hate LeBron as well. And you think he's played for the Heat. He's played for Cleveland. Now he's in um, L.A. You got a lot of people that's like, damn, Ninja, I done bought every jersey. I'm not buying no more jerseys. That's why I just keep a crown. Just. Because he might not be done relocating, but, but 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 let's put this in perspective though. Let's take a uh, an athlete like let's say Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, he went to he was they, he allegedly beat up his wife in Robin Givens. He went to jail for rape. He literally bit a grown man's ear off in the middle of the ring with millions of people watching on pay per view, and he's still one of the most beloved athletes in the world. He's more beloved than LeBron James, correct? I think so. So, like, it's like when you look at LeBron James, the man is a philanthropist. He's a, a player. He doesn't cheat the game. If he is cheating on his wife, he's done it in a classy way to where she's not embarrassed. Uh, 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 we're not going to say that. We're not going to say that about Savannah, the man. I mean, no, sir. No, sir. Mm -mm. No, no, I mean, no, Savannah is the, it's the truth. She's the queen. Uh, 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 if he is... It's not gotten out to the public. He hadn't disrespected her. He hadn't been, you know, he hadn't been one of those guys that's done that. He's built schools. He he's he's pro culture. He's for the culture. He's like a real brother. And I'm just saying that that just as many black as white people. Stop right there. 
And it's that other aspect because he is for the culture. You got the ones who ain't for the culture. Why does he have to say that? That's another sect of people that could hate LeBron, you know? Right. It's That's just, it's just remarkable. torch toting people. Okay, okay, right. But I'm just saying that, that it crosses racial lines as well because there's a lot of black people that they can't stand LeBron. Lakers fans who hadn't had a, a, a playoff victory in six years were, were like, no, anti-LeBron coming to save their franchise. Because it's not their beloved Kobe. Now, first one says LeBron has a little diva in him, but he's a great role model for the youth. And, yes. And, and again, like, like everything seems to outweigh the good with LeBron. You say it's oversaturation. I really don't know why. Now, I mean... He hadn't even won enough. Now, if he won 10 championships, but it's, I let me, get... let me let me let me go back. When LeBron James first hit the scene, I was like, who is this? The sports illustrated with him with the ball like this. Yeah. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Like I was like, oh my God. I said, this kid is a grown man. Like I was excited to see LeBron. Like I said, I I don't like LeBron for basketball reasons. I don't not like LeBron the person. LeBron James is a beast. We knew that from the first time we actually saw him playing the NBA game. I don't think he's ever had like a down season. Right. But he's not Kobe. He's not their Kobe. He's not Kobe being Brian. Like Kobe came in and took over probably being the most popular Laker ever. Yeah, over, right. Even over the logo. Right. I mean, you had the, the logo on Even the, over the Showtime Lakers, Lakers. yeah. Right. You took, and Showtime was the era when we all didn't care. We were just rooting for the Lakers. Right. Right. So that has a lot to do with the L.A. hate because he's not he's not Kobe. And they probably see him as, hey, we, we got our championships. What can you do for us? And then the one in the bubble, I still think a lot of them are like, you, that was one in the bubble. That don't count. Look, I bet it counted when, when they was watching Boston go for number 18. I mean, let's not forget who the Lakers were when they had Smush Parker and, and Kobe playing on a bad Achilles, and and they was the, the Lonzo Balls and 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 Brandon Ingrams and them they, when they was getting slossed up and down the court. Like how quickly we forget Lakers fans. And he came there, and at least you've been competitive and relevant. Relative. Relevant, yeah, you've been relevant. So I mean, it, it, that was just a, a fascinating thing that I was like, wow, why is this guy so hated? Because some of my biggest debates with sports people is about LeBron James. Now, now we have a question, Tasha. Imagine a backlash if Le LeBron got accused of rape, like Kobe. Kobe was accused of rape and is still more beloved than LeBron. Like that, that just goes to my point. How? What? What? Like, how does he rub you the wrong way so bad? And not you personally, Tasha, but you know a lot of sports fans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of my friends down here, Christian, Christian is 24 years old, and all of, if because he, he says, I, can I come watch basketball? Can I come watch basketball? All he talks about is LeBron James. Because down here, they don't know about the outside entities. All they see is greatness on the court. They don't hear all the the, the shit that comes along with being LeBron James. All they see are the games. So it so, could be a domestic thing you're saying then. Yeah. Domestic because, oversaturation. Because, and I even, I argue with Christian so much. Like we go back and forth about KD. He will just randomly sometimes send me a LeBron James, like a stat or, or a LeBron James photo because he, he just loves LeBron James that much. So, I mean, I do think that has something to do with it as well because here they're not into all of the, the drama. They don't care if he has six girlfriends or anything like they don't care about that. Right. And, and you just said something that, that made me think to ask you another question. Is it the LeBron fans that also make you tired of LeBron? Are, are we part of the problem? You make me tired of LeBron. I can have that damn crown. I can't wait to get down there. I'm gonna throw that shit right in the garbage. Uh oh, this is going to the safe. <laughs> I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that crown. So we are, we're part of the problem then. The LeBron. Because, wait a minute. I saw so many people. Yeah, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. The Cavs. The Cavs. The Cavs. That was me. Going to bushes like Homer Simpson. Come out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. The Heat. The Heat. I, I thought you were Cavs. Oh, wait, where did LeBron go? I'm, I'm a LeBron fan. That was me. <laughs> that was me. Then back in the, in the home of Simpson bushes. Come back out with you got your Lakers jersey on. That was your, me. 
with your man titties out. Oh, uh, they're called middies. Thank oh, you. I'm sorry. With, the, with your middies and your shirt, and it's tight across the belly because the <laughs> got- <laughs> you know you see them white men at the game and they <laughs> doing this with the LeBron jersey on. <laughs> I can only laugh because she ain't telling no lies. Uh, she literally watched me do this over the course of a decade. Yeah, so I'm she actually I'm calling up. you out. You. <laughs> LeBron is a little like the Cowboys. A lot of love and hate. Yeah, and it's good yeah. for the game. Because I was going to ask you, do you think that, that the NBA Finals were missed LeBron James this year? No. Damn. And you remember I even told you that – it's good if LeBron is not in it because you get to see the younger players. Because had it been LeBron James in the playoffs, all we would have heard about was LeBron James. We wouldn't have been That's able true. to get the Luca and the Ja. Right. You know, even though and they really stepped into the spotlight at that point. Yeah. Right. A lot of these younger players, the Jason Tatum's, you know, yeah. we we really wanted to see Jason Tatum. We wanted right. to see what was going on with some other players because LeBron, Bronny is what 17, 16, 17. Bronny, I mean. The, LeBron's not going to play forever, and who's to say Bronny's going to even make it? Right, because word on the streets is he's like a, a mid-major type of talent right now, not a I, told you, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't check it. I haven't checked it since we had the show last time when you asked that question about LeBron playing with his son. And I said at that time he was like the 47th in his position, not 47th on the list. At, yeah, it's a lot of schools out there, and, and maybe he'll get with the right coach that can develop him. Lord knows with the NIL, he can go to college and, and make his own money yes. um, before going to the pros. I think his name alone will get him drafted when you see some of the people that, that comes off the benches in these NBA games. <laughs> now, let's uh, let's let's get to, to this, uh, this or that. Last week, you did a great job playing this or that. People wanted to come back for a round two, so I got some more. Some more. I ain't had no precursor. I don't know what's going on. This is called the hot seat. She has no clue what I'm about to say right now. And you already know. So (laughs) right. You you, you've been on your on your truth twig. So let's get (laughs) to it. This or that. Would you rather be a Hall of Famer or a world champion? The world champion. You rather be a world champion than a Hall of Famer? Simply because whenever you see some of those others on that bench who don't deserve a ring, they got a ring and that ring get them some clout. You don't need to be in the Hall of Fame if you're a world champion. Okay, so then you basically answered the second question. Would you rather average 30 and 10 in the finals and lose or not play a single minute and win? Ooh. Now, depending on who I am, me being me, we, I ain't we, thought, we asking T Sizzle. Me being me, I ain't no, I ain't no, no, no. You ain't no bootlicking trustee. Yeah, I ain't no bootlicking trustee. I want to be seen. You, I, I don't want to be at the at the parade dancing, and they like, who is that? They have you the bottle to spray the stars with. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't. I don't want that. No, I, I want to be seen. So you rather average 30 and 10 and they say T-Sizzle did all she could, but her team just couldn't get over the hump? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Now, let's go with this or that. Prime Penny Hardaway or Prime Tracy McGrady? Oh, I'm going to go with Penny simply because when McGrady was a rookie, he was playing in the shadow of Vince, and you yes. didn't see him. So I'm now, gonna he have did to leave his, his, his cohort and shine after he left. Right. So I am going to have to go with Memphis's own Penny Hardaway. Y'all need to Google Penny Hardaway if you don't remember who he was at Memphis State in the early Orlando days. That man was electrifying. Now, they said they're a Facebook, Facebook user. user. That's right. True. Barkley would trade his entire career with Big Shot Bob, who had, what, six rings? Five or six. Okay, interesting. Because that's the one thing Shaq is always Shaq and uh, Kenny always throwing up in Charles's face. That Kenny, he didn't have no Kenny ring. only won his ring because of who he was playing with, not because you were playing the Jets. <laughs> that is a perfect example of what you said. You'd rather be a contributor and a champion than a Hall of Famer because that ring does get you into get into a, a, a lot of swag. All right, let's go with Lisa Leslie or Candace Parker. 
First of all, did you watch the 30 for 30 on the 96 women's dream team? No, I didn't. I haven't seen that one. That, that, that's on the on the watch list for this weekend, then. Go 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 back and go, go back and watch it. <laughs> um Oh, that's hard because Lisa Leslie didn't Lisa in high school score like a hundred points. She was the first one to dunk it, and Candace came behind her, and you going down. Oh my gosh, I don't know. That's a hard one. You know everything in me is saying Candace, but you can't. Ooh, Lisa got down for hers though. Lisa, ooh, and Cheryl, so, ooh. Uh, I'm gonna say only reason I'm gonna say Candace is simply because right after she gave birth to that baby, she was back on that court playing ball. Is this like a Janet Jackson baby? Like, did we really see her pregnant? Yes, you remember when she was married to Sheldon Williams and she had her little, you not yeah. Janet, that's a Beyonce, not a Janet. Don't do that, don't do Beyonce like that. All right, um, right, let's go with a couple of 2,000 yard rushers from the same city. You going with Chris Johnson? Or are you going with Derrick Henry? The only reason Tighten why up, gonna, Tighten up. the only reason I'm gonna go for Chris Jackson, I mean Johnson. Chris Jackson, Chris Johnson is because he got that life. <laughs> he got that life. He'll 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 slap a hole. That's what you say. Yeah. <laughs> He about now, that life. Now, so was the best women's players ever. I don't, I don't uh, disagree with that. Oh, no, and her know. thirty for thirty was really good too. She yes. it was crazy. That one was wild. Yes. So yeah, that she was doing a whole lot on and off the court. That was <laughs> Will Tiss Chamberlain. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna leave that right there. All right, let's go with uh, a, a NBA tandem matchup. We got Prime Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. Versus Prom, John Stockton, and Carl Malone. You mean who I think is better or who I would want to watch? And who you think is better, who you would rather watch? Just which one you taking all factors? Of I'd, rather, I'd rather watch the glove and the rain, man, all day long. Their highlight um, package was insane. <laughs> but if I'm going to bet, like, I want to win or try to get further, I'm going to go with Stockton and Malone. Stock, people don't realize just how good Stockton and Malone really were, like consistently good, even before they had the two run-ins with, with Mike. And that second year in 98, they should have beat Michael and them. They should have beat Michael and them. They had a better roster top to bottom. But it was uh, that push-off. <laughs> Y'all, that was the biggest push-off. And he pushed them off the damn camera screen. You couldn't even see the man no more. They didn't go yeah. hold the clothes. Like, what was this, what was this to replay? Back then, they would have pulled. They would have called that back and would have went to a game seven. That is the truth. Um. Okay, let's go with Prime Randall Cunningham or Prime Warren Moon. Who you taking? Oh, oh, I'm gonna have to go with Moon because Randall Cunningham wasn't wasn't in the Diet Coke commercial. What? What was Warren Moon in the Diet Coke commercial? He was. When I reach for when I quench for a thirst, I reach for it first. I can settle the score. I can make a lot more and it settles the score. For Bengals number seven, the taste of pure heaven. It's the drink of the moon. It's playing Al's tune. It moves you. Easy. Look, I never thought Al tune would make the show, but shut up. <laughs> yes. Up. He stood up on the bench. He said it's the drink of the moon. Yep. He was that in was the a shout out to AP Culture because she said the warm moon should have been my daddy. So um so we're gonna roll with Warren Moon. She loved the, the little tightly compacted Bobo. Sorry. And he'd spin that ball. In, in, in I'm, having technical, I'm having technical <laughs> issues. Let me, find out, let me find out AP was for the streets. <laughs> <laughs> she had a hot girl summer. And, you know, <laughs> trying to get down to Houston. And last but not least, let's 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 have a sibling robbery. We're going with Rondé Barber or Tiki Barber. Oh, Rondé. Over Tiki? Tiki was the man. Rondé, what did we say? He got that ring. He did. And, and the, the Giants won two out of the next four when he retired after Tiki left the team. So, yeah, that's that's a good tiebreaker. Oh, one more sibling robbery. Nick Bosa or Joey Bosa? Uh, you really going to make me – I mean – you know my obvious answer, of course, only because of team affiliation. Right, right. Another, come on, dude. 
Okay, well, so we, we're going to go with, with Joey then on that one. Okay, got you. Now, I'm wearing the Project Takeover podcast shirt today because I want to give a shout-out to my, my man Nick Torsley Famous. You may remember this from the Project Takeover days. We would end the show with, with what he would call news you can't use. Yes. The, and the thing is, I will give props to him. It was hilarious. Like, he would come up with these We need to get, get Nick on the show, maybe. Nick, where you at? I know he just... Speaking of Father's Day weekend, he just had a baby girl, so we're gonna see if if um if uh, he's available to come on because news you can't use was some hilarious. Yes, essay, you know what? So we've never actually transitioned that to the extra point out of respect for the creator of that content until today, because there's a story that hit that I have got to get your opinion on, one way or the other. Now check this out. If now now T Sizzle, if you know where this story is going. Let me finish it for the people who are going to be listening because I want to get your thoughts on this because it's too crazy to be true, but it is. So there's a 70-year-old woman. In- <laughs> <laughs> Don't be laughing. This is tragic. I already know. I already know. There's a 70-year-old woman in India that was <laughs> pulling water out the well, like in the Old Testament. She's getting water out the well, and this elephant comes up and cold cocks her and tramples her to death. Now, that is tragic. You stop laughing right now, Tasha T. Sizzle. I'm that not laughing. That's just the fact I know the story. So the elephant tramples the lady to death. That Now, while that's tragic, uh, we have that, that's not uncommon. We've heard stories of, of wildlife killing civilians before. But what made this story crazy is the fact that while the family that night gathered at the lady's house to perform uh, 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 basically like a ceremony for her, the elephant returned out of nowhere and trampled the damn lady again before running off into the night. <laughs> Tasha, is this true? Do you believe this story? It's not the fact that I believe the story. It's the, sh- the stuff that came out after. <laughs> and I'm giving an early shout out. Shout out to my boy. Another dude, good guy from Memphis, Steve. His birthday is today. So Steve and I back and forth on Instagram. We sent stuff. And <laughs> I sent him that story. And I couldn't do anything but laugh. And he says, you know what? He said, I'm not even reading this. He said, it ain't worth my time. He said, it ain't worth my time. <laughs> and then they got the one with the elephant head on the do-rag, a blunt, and some black <laughs> And it, and if you and if you about that life, you know what it means when you see a brother with some black Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> Those are getaway shoes. <laughs> and then, then my own kid put this thing up. Nobody, <laughs> black people, ain't no telling what she did to that elephant. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook says. So the elephant did two drive-bys. <laughs> yes, two tusk bars. <laughs> I don't. This is like, like a, a Nick story. Something Nick came this is up something with. Straight out of, of news you can't use. How did the elephant know to double back and to finish her off for good? When I read it, when I, I'm serious, my face said. Hmm. How did like, the elephant know? Look, who invited the elephant back into the fray? Here she is. <laughs> they say it's better cow. <laughs> There, there ain't no damn puppy, Gina. Get the hell out of here. They no, said my family sat there and watched in horror as the, the as the elephant trampled her again, knocked her off her little thing, and ran off into the night. Who had the, the strap? Nobody had the strap. Nobody made that elephant pay. They didn't have that elephant gun. Wasn't nobody looking for no ivory. I would be looking for that damn elephant right now if, they, if that was my family member that got stomped out. And then they returned back like on... on on some mobsters, you know what, and and stomped again at the funeral. Who is that elephant? <laughs> okay, India. <laughs> hey, sing. I think we need to remove that from the list of vacations. Right. So, shout out to Nick Torsley Famous. When I saw it, I was like, did Nick post this? Like, this is <laughs> only something that will wind up on news you can't use. All right, shout, and, and and may may that lady rest in peace. That is a yes. terrible way to go. Can you imagine looking up and that big old elephant <laughs> goo? <laughs> Do you think the elephant said, "Bitch, I told you"? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. All yes. right. Now it is time for our favorite segment of the week. It's our weekly T Sizzle's top five. 
Now, tomorrow's Father's Day. So in honor of Father's Day, we want to we wanna get a, a gander of T. Sizzle's top five TV dads of all time. T. Sizzle, the floor is yours. Okay, I'm going to say Jack Pearson. And some, I, Paul is like, <laughs> you went from who to what? Who? That is the father from This Is Us. Oh, okay, okay. Because you think they were having triplets, one of their babies died, and then here comes your wife home with a black baby that she found on the steps. Or no, the cop took the baby to the hospital while they were there. Who chocolate the baby is this? <laughs> Out of bed. <heaven. laughs> and so they took little Randall in, and there you have it. So that's Jack Pearson. Okay. Walter White. Okay. Who is Walter White? What? Breaking Bad. He didn't mean he was man, he oh. making that, you know, he was down and move that dope. Hey. Y'all moving that young and made hey. me feel good. He was moving that weight because he lost, he had cancer. So that's why he started making that crystal meth. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Because he, he wanted to be able to pay for his, his radiation, right? Okay. Okay. Everybody when he was making that making that crystal meth. Okay. Making and Facebook that used a good job by you. That's on my list. Keep going. Next, I have Carl Winslow. Okay, all right. He had to deal with Urkel and a lot he of had to, he had to deal with Urkel. He, he did. Shouts out to Carl Winslow. I got James Evans. Now, Junior, I ain't gonna tell you no more. <laughs> Even when he left the family, moved out there to Arizona and died. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't funny. He moved they killed him off the show. Moved up to Arizona over a contract dispute. <clears throat> then I have Dre Johnson. I know a lot of you guys, if you didn't watch Blackish, he was from the hood. He didn't go to school, but he got a nice job, got him a wife that's a doctor. They got a nice house. If you haven't watched Blackish, it's, it's, it's series is over, but you can go back and watch that. And I've never seen one episode. It's so good. It's so good. I'll and have to check that out. One Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable. You keep your comments to yourself. No, we're not. So Bill Cosby made the list hard, hard, That's hard. That's actually six. He was a he was an honorable mention. He was the greatest TV dad of all time. And, and yes, R.I.P. Uncle Phil. Um, James had to die to get out the pro- right. He went from the project straight on to heaven, on the road to Damascus. <laughs> um, Started converting Christian, converting sinners over to Christian. Right. Now no, your name pa- is your name is Paul. That's your namesake. Right. Paul. Right. Shout out to Apostle Paul. Okay, so my top five is a little bit different. It's a little bit more old school because I don't watch a lot of TV. But I'm going to start with number one. It's got to be James Evans. It, that was the first daddy I seen on, on TV that was handling his business. Number two, who could have been a 1A, is one Fred G. Sanford. He <laughs> loved that. He let his old ass son stay and live with him. And they never sold no junk. Never so sold was, no junk. I ain't never seen nobody in there cleaning. I ain't never seen nothing. That house, I bet it smelled like it look on TV. <laughs> they never sold one item. So you know that, that Levant was milking off his, his government check. So shouts out to Fred Sample for keeping food on the table because Lamont didn't have no job. He played <laughs> like he worked in, in, in the junkyard. But again, they never sold nothing. Um, yeah, Sanford Arms. <laughs> okay. Um, Number three TV dad, Homer Simpson. The Simpsons. <laughs> because that, Homer Simpson was black. Every episode, he was ready to beat his kid's ass. <laughs> you remember when he wanted to get disability? So he gained <laughs> all that weight and put that moo on and had that bird pecking like this and hitting the key, but then the bird <laughs> was too much and the plant blew up? <laughs> Homer Simpson. He was the real star of the Simpsons, even over Bart. Um, number four, Al Bundy from <laughs> Now he makes the list because he took care of a whole house of ingrates uh, on a on a shoe salesman salary. He was selling shoes, y'all. My man was, shoes. was pushing pumas <laughs> and took care of a whole family. The wife didn't work, the kids didn't work, they grown. All right. And last but not least, Mr. Drummond. 
He saved them two little black boys. But he also almost let Dudley get raped in that process. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to touch me <laughs> over a huffy. <laughs> over a Schwinn. He gave me a huffy bike and touched me around the tenderloin. I digress. So, shout out to Mr. Drummond for changing the lives of two Brooklyn boys and, and, and letting them get into the wheel because Dana was on that on that yak. All right. Um, Sasha T. Sizzle, your shout out for this week. <laughs> I don't have any shout outs, really the usual, you know, happy Father's Day. And guys, this is, that's my cabinet guy. That's who was at the door. Carlos, Carlos, say hi. Hi. Hello, Carlos. <laughs> so I really don't have any shout outs for today. Like I said, just the usual happy Father's Day things and everybody be safe. Right. Over the weekend. I'm going to give a shout out to one friend of the show, Shamika Nicole. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday to her. And of course, I want to send a shout out to all the fathers out there. My dad, William Coulter, and all the fathers out there, all the fathers checking in. Happy Father's Day to all of you. And um, next week, we'll be back as a trio. Michigan Mike will be back on set. And uh, we'll see you all in six days in about 23 hours. Until then, peace. <laughs>